When I first started doing this YouTube malarkey, I knew I had to sign a deal with the social media devil, and one of the first places I started to use quite regularly was Twitter. It wasn't something I'd ever used before, I didn't quite understand what was going on, and I essentially just added a load of people who were either talking about retro things, ZX Spectrum things, or anyone that declared chocolate digestives are the best biscuits in their profile. This got me off to a good base, and as the channel grew, I started to get followers that had more interesting character traits than biscuits. I started to get people who were creative, or important, or otherwise just very handsome. Two people who are very much all three of these things, and probably also declare chocolate digestives as their favourite biscuits, are Raymond Russell, developer of new Spectrum game Blocks, Block Z, Blogs, however it's pronounced. He made that, and Gaz Marshall, developer of other Spectrum game, Magenta Jim, which itself is a reference to another Twitter user called Jim Blimey, who writes ZX Spectrum reviews, and he's also currently making his own Spectrum game. Honestly, Twitter is mental. How did all of these people just appear out of nowhere? Get a room, everyone. Now, I'm merging both of these games into one video, because ultimately they're both pretty simple games, but they're also both new, so I don't really want to spoil anything where possible. I mean, when I say new, They've both been out for a while now, and I'm only just getting around to talking about them, but considering most of the games I'm reviewing are 30 years old, I reckon I'm pretty ahead of the curve here. Shut up. Let's start with Raymond Russell's blocks first, and firstly, plant your ears on this lovely ditty. That music right there comes from yet another Twitter stalwart, Spectrum Nares, who long-time viewers of the channel may remember from the very first games that made this episode. Seriously, there are too many people on Twitter, it's disgusting. That music and all the music you'll find in Blocks is composed by Mr. Spectrum Nares, or Neil as his mother calls him, and it's all really, really lovely stuff. I mean, super good, catchy, unintrusive, earwormy stuff that really suits the game down to a T. And then we come to the game. We come to the game and we look at it and we say, Oh, it's a block pusher. And if your first reactions there were the same as mine, then I can't blame you. Soccer band games are not something that I've ever really enjoyed, mostly because they're drab wee affairs, but also because my brain just doesn't click with them. Fear not though, soccer band haters, while the game may look like it's going to drag you into that Japanese warehouse simulator world, this actually plays a lot faster, a lot quicker, and a lot, lot, lot less boring. Raymond has managed to snap off all the bits I don't like when it comes to games like this, namely the endless wandering and the open nature of the puzzles at play. Soccer band games tend to give you the illusion of multiple choices when in fact there's only one way to win. Blocks strips that illusion away, there is only one way to win, but it's clear from a glance what each of the puzzle pieces do, and an idea of a solution will form in your head the instant you start playing. You move a cursor around the screen, you click on a block, and that block will move in the direction shown. There are simple blocks that move up, down, left and right, and there are more complicated blocks that move in multiple directions. There are even blocks that, get this, don't even move at all. That blew my mind. The goal here is to get rid of each block on screen, and you do that by making them line up next to each other. If you manage to line up two or more blocks in a row, they disappear. What you'll find is that your initial response to these levels is to take things slow and digest the puzzle, but a consistently angry timer will be draining down, so you can sod that idea. There's a panic involved with sorting these things out. You need to do it right, but you need to do it quick, and whether this was intentional or a happy accident or divine intervention, this forces you into using your instincts when you first boot up a level, and your first attempt will always end up at one of two places. You'll either complete the puzzle and declare yourself king of the genius men, or you'll fail, but you'll have a much better understanding of what to do next time based on the blocks that are left behind. What looks at first to be another slow, methodical plodder of a puzzle game becomes a quick synapse-blasting thought machine. You will consistently pat yourself on the back for solving puzzles almost without thinking. The levels are layered in such a way that incidental mechanics are slowly added into the core mix, and it's just genuinely surprising that the game manages to do what it does so well. I would have never considered that a game in which you click on blocks and watch them move in a direction could be described as exciting, but it is. It's thrilling to see the solution that you threw together on the fly come out as the correct answer, or failing that. It's equally as thrilling to finally solve the damn thing after three, four, five failed attempts in a row. 
There are lives here with a number of retries you can burn through before you're kicked up the arse with a high score in your pocket, but thankfully the game can be continued where you left off. You can play the game as a high score chaser, or you can play the game to make yourself feel clever. It's up to you. Highly recommended though. Moving on to Magenta Gym then, it's a game that on the face of it looks like a standard maze-based Pac-Man affair, but it actually has a lot more in common with blocks than you'd first expect. Firstly, that music. I don't know what it is about these people making new Spectrum music in the year 2020, but I am all over it. Another great tune that genuinely feels like a forgotten classic from 30 years ago. There's some talented buggers about. The game though, what's going on here then? Well, first off, can I just say that I love shiny things in Spectrum games. I think it's like a Pavlov's dog reaction at this point, because every budget game I had as a kid would make sure that good things were shiny. As soon as the first level came into view, my instinct was to hoover up every single delicious piece of shiny I could. Which is lucky, because that's what you've got to do, but... Oh no, there's a load of bastard UFO enemies knocking about. Now, to the untrained eye, you might be thinking that these things are all out to get you at once, but the enemies are all fixed to a specific pattern. This is less like Pac-Man in that sense, and much more methodical in its execution. It's a real-time puzzle game, effectively, and it'll take a while for that to truly sink in, because your eyes have essentially got to train themselves to see the hidden monorails that these enemies are following. At any given moment, you can be trapped in a corner that you were sure that annoying little get hadn't gone down before, but he did, because they always follow the same path, and it's up to you to work out where you can slip in and out of those paths. A game like this wouldn't work, though, if it wasn't for tight controls, and let me be honest here, Magenta Gym was a game I first played about a month ago now, and I didn't like it. I kept getting stuck on the corners of the maze, one pixel out, and you'll waste so much time trying to realign yourself that you'll just end up dead. When I booted the game back up this week, my feelings were very much the same. I hate this! I can't get this stupid magenta idiot to go where I want him to! Why can't it be like Pac-Man where you can hold down the direction before you get there? Where you can basically hug the corners and slide into the next direction? Oh. Oh, it is like Pac-Man. Yes, that's right. I'm an idiot. I'd presume that the game's sticky controls were either badly programmed or a throwback to the era of Spectrum games where everything used to control like this. I hadn't even attempted to push in more than one direction because I'm so used to playing old Spectrum games where you just have to deal with the jank, it never occurred to me. And my god, what a difference it makes. Running around this monorail track, taking enemy patterns into account while rushing around the level hoovering up delicious shiny coins feels fantastic when you actually use the controls in the way they're intended. I went from losing nearly all of my lives on the first level to getting right through to level 5 without losing a single life. And the game offers up some truly arse-clenching moments in later levels as enemy patterns begin to overlap to the point where your mind has to work three times faster than your poor fingers can manage. It's funny how two games that have almost nothing in common with each other can offer a similar exhilaration from two very different areas of influence. Blocks makes you feel like Dr. Mensa throwing puzzles in front of your eyes and forcing you to trust an initial judgement, giving you a shot at redemption if you fail by giving you the hindsight left by the blocks that weren't removed. Magenta Gym makes you feel like you have the reactions of a cocker spaniel on coke. You get dumped into a level with multiple moving parts, and you just run with it, all the while taking in these hidden enemy paths, storing them up in the only working part of your brain while you run around hoovering things up. In both games you can complete a level completely by accident, but in both cases you'll feel like an absolute genius for doing so. And that's it, that's all I've got to say on both games. They are both well worth playing. They both came out in 2020, and look at me reviewing games that came out this year. What a clever boy I am.